you, Gary. Let's start, start by talking about the St Luke's Challenge Cup. Uh, we featured a, a young side in it last night. How did they do and how did we do as a whole, do you think? Yes, I was, yeah, I was quite pleased. I mean, we lost the game. Um, and Tivet and had uh, Tivet, uh, Tavistock. Um, they, uh, for the level they're playing at, they looked a good good side. You know, I've obviously uh, got a few players that can can play. It was a, uh, and they could play on a pretty wet pitch as well. The pitch was quite wet. Um, but yeah, we had uh, well, we had four or five sixteen year olds and. Um, along with a couple of our, few of our South Devon College lads, uh, plus lads that are just coming back from injury. We had uh, Jared played, uh, Jared Lewington. Um, Busey could only play a half, and uh, Louis Slough could only play a half, although he tried to play uh, a little bit longer, but had to come off just after half time. So it, it always serves a, a purpose, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, Toby Stock deserved, deserved their victory, but it was good experience for uh, our young lads to go down there and play a bit of men's football. Johnny Cuniate has left us to join Aldershot. Um, we wish him well, don't we, yeah. after, after his time at the club? Yeah, um, yeah both him and Rory. Um, obviously we spoke about Rory, but you know, John was another champion and, uh, and we always... Um, wish our champions well but they're like Rory he's of the age 26 now where he wants to play every week and sometimes you can't guarantee people playing every week uh, obviously John was doing okay got sent off then the other lads came in and sometimes you you don't change the team for whatever reason um, and so with John being out of contract at the end of the year it was uh, only fair to circulate his name to see whether there was interest for him because generally if you go to the next club they'll give you an 18 month contract or certainly if he does well in the, for the rest of the season at all the shot then if he hasn't already got a contract the next year there then you know, they'll be looking to do one. So it's, um, yeah, we wish him well. It's football, things change, things turn around, there'll be different opinions as to you know, whether Rory or John should have stayed, but if you know, if if you can't guarantee them first team games, and I know you know what may be coming in, what we tried to get in at the time, and what we're still trying to get in, because we're not held down by the transfer windows. You know, it, it doesn't really. In fact, it suits us that when the transfer windows finish, we can still uh, do business. Uh, so lads that didn't move to a league club that were hoping to move to a league club in the transfer window suddenly we're their best option so uh, we just got to wait another day or two before we you know start um, thinking about bringing lads in to us what stage are we at in terms of this kind of squad refresh and uh, what elements are you looking to add to the team well, I, was, I, was, I think everybody, you know, don't need to sp spill out what, you know, what positions we need. Um, we definitely need a stronger squad. We definitely need a bigger squad um, for the competition, and we we we've still got a few lads out, you know, that that will be back. <coughs> the problem is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the problem is if you if you fill your squad too early and then your injuries all come back then people are going to be some people are going to be disappointed and all of a sudden you've got a different atmosphere around the place so we have to judge it time it um, but we're doing our best to to get the you know the best group of people we possibly can to compete for the rest of this season uh, with one eye on next season as well whatever division we may be in we've got some of the Injured players back and they're working their way back into the team. Are you seeing early signs of the kind of relationships on the pitch building again in terms of uh, building up performance? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you if you take the last four games, what we five games, we we won a couple of games, drawn a couple of games, and lost one. Um, if you take the last ten games, it doesn't sound as healthy as as that. But uh, you know, if you take the 
um, after the sort of Yeovil games, and we 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 haven't really we haven't done too bad in letting in goals. When we let in two goals, we won the game at, at, at five. Um, so you could say it's not been a bad sort of last three or four games. Um, but is it four games unbeaten or something? I think it's four games unbeaten. Anyway, um, so hopefully we you know we we've got that long run out of our systems and. People like uh, Connor, Armani, Asa, you know, they've all sort of come back from long-term injuries. They can only get better and better each each week. And uh, you know, with those types of players getting better and better, then it, it bodes well for for the future. But uh, we've got to get it going pretty quick. Barrow put some formidable uh, form mm. in place and. Uh, but we know that on our day that we can be anyone. We've got the talent in the team to overcome uh, any kind of team in, in the division, hopefully. Yeah, we have, and you know we believe that, and we've proved that as well. Um, Barrow are at this moment in time the most consistent team in the league. Um, if you look back over there, they've got a small squad, but they've been very lucky, and they haven't had any too many major injuries. And so they've played the same team more or less week in, week out. And you know, every uh, league I've won um, or promotion we, we've had previously, generally you've had the luck of keeping the same group of people for a lot longer than we have had this year. Um, and again, I try not to use that as an excuse. I'm using it as a fact that Barrow have been lucky enough to to have some you know, good good players that have been regular. Um, so, and they are at the moment the, the most consistent team in the league. So, it's a great game for us. I think I'm looking forward to it because you're right. We can compete with uh, any team in this league on our day. Um, and the lads need to believe that in their heads as well. Uh, so it's a good game to have to see how far we've come in the last sort of few couple of weeks, if you like, uh, with our change of form a little bit. Um, I know people would not really, none of us in, enjoyed uh, the Ebbsfleet game um, because the ball was only in play for 42 minutes, which is ridiculous and we knew that Ebbsfleet had come for their draw even in the first 10 minutes there was you know that so it's very difficult to get a, um, a momentum going which is our game you, know, you need to get that momentum and the runs of attacks and especially when you're at home and sometimes if you if you're not playing well either and giving the ball away too often then that that wastes time as well but uh, certainly Oppositions have uh, decided to come here and shut up shop pretty pretty quickly and hope to catch us on the on the break. So um, you know we 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 we'll wait and see how other teams now come to us, but we've got to be good enough to to break them down. Whereas obviously we're going to Barrow now, and I suspect that you know they've scored seven a couple of times and they've scored four a few times. So I don't know they have they scored more than us probably one or two more than us. But um, they haven't, no. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that game to see see how we compete with a team that's been pretty consistent. It's our second longest trip of the season, I believe. Uh, second longest. Oh, is it Hartlepool? Second, Hartlepool being the longer. Yeah. Um, obviously, it goes that saying. The Yellow Army that get up there on the day will be well appreciated. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, at Tavistock yesterday, we had a fellow who. Travelled on the bus to, um, uh, you know, from London to Tavistock to to watch the game, and we made a bit of a fuss of him because I think Downsy saw it on Instagram or something, you know. So credit to him, but you know, and credit to the people that come to these games. You know, we, I'm very, uh, I, I understand how much effort I really do goes into these supporters that, that travel to watch us play because you know everything's north of Torquay, everything's a million miles away and uh, and I know the effort. So 
nobody appreciates them more than I do. And if I can, you know, if I get the chance and I meet people outside the ground, you know, I don't get off the coach, get me head down and go straight into the dressing room, I'll often say that, you know, thanks for coming and we really do appreciate it. As do the boys, definitely. Because I think if I had any players that didn't appreciate that sort of stuff, I, I wouldn't have them here. You know, we've got to appreciate uh, what we do on the pitch, but what the club does off the pitch and what the supporters do over the years in, in their support. And they can have their opinion sometimes, you know, they, you feel that we haven't played well, then other days we're all happy. That's, you know, par and parcel of a supporter uh, of a football club. And, uh, but we, we do respect and thank them for their support. To crossing the T's on bringing a player in, yeah. that didn't happen for whatever reason. Was that massively frustrating for you? It was frustrating, but I've had 30 Januaries now over the years, and, uh, and I know things happen, and I've nicked players in the last moments of a transfer window when I was manager in the league. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it is part of the course. But this one was particularly frustrating because it had all been agreed. And uh, and the club and the player uh, were speaking to me regular, and it was just a matter of uh, you know getting down to Cheltenham. The hotel was all ready, and uh, Cheltenham, getting down uh, to the Oval. <laughs> a fraudulent slip. Um, I could have said about eight other clubs. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was I was actually thinking of a, somebody to let us down at Cheltenham as well. But anyway, yeah. this is talking, um, and. You know, when I think it was the way it was done as well. We wasn't, we wasn't told. Uh, we just uh, uh, we only heard at the very, very last minute. Yeah. And and so therefore it messes you up a little bit because we purposely didn't go for other players because, as far as we were concerned at the time, it, the lad was definitely coming coming to us, but. These things happen, and you know, he decided to go to a league club, um, which is also, I suppose, understandable. But uh, it did it did leave us with a, a bit of a sour taste in in our mouth, to be fair. But uh, that's that's football, I'm afraid. And, part and parcel, I suppose. Yeah, it is. Part January parcel. transfer window. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, in the wake of that, have you had any? Obviously, you, you, you've already mentioned that um, you, you have to, the timing of these things is quite important. Mm. But uh, are you any further on in the next one on the list or the next two on the list uh, at the moment? Well, I don't want to say, really, because no, 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 no. I say yes. In a <laughs> week's time, we still ain't done it. You'll be yeah. still quizzing me. But uh, of course, we, we've got an, a group of targets now that we, uh, we have to wait now till after the windows because then you might take the one who thought that he was going to a league club, as I've just referred to. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we, we listen, you ask me any day of the week, any minute of the week, and I'll tell you, yes, we've got people that we're looking at and following, etc. cetera. Um, and we are, that's exactly what we're doing. And it's, uh, I think we've, when, when everybody's fit here, I think we've we've got a team, a very very competitive team at this level, and uh, we need to make sure, as Pete always tells me, you can always make your team worse, and uh, that's what we you, you've got to be careful of. You know, I mean, we needed loans at the time for numbers. You know, during the season, you don't just get a loan like that. You know, it's got to be the club wants them to come out and et cetera, et cetera. The lad has got to want to come. So um, there's all different aspects to it. It's not as easy as going and getting Wayne Rooney when you fancy him, you know, when you want him. So, But uh, we're working hard, definitely. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get it all right. And I know you can say, well, hurry up because you ain't got too much time. And we haven't. But we've, we've been trying to do our business diligently um, all the way through and we'll see where we end up at the end of the season but we've also got a build for next season as I've said for whatever division we're in. Are any of the our current loans are they up for decisions and um, you I think we mentioned earlier in the month that one or two of our younger loans 
were possibly up later this month. Are, are there any that are going back or you've made decisions um, on? I mean, obviously one or two have yeah, Frankie uh, and things like that. Yeah, that's right. At the moment, um, nobody's going back, back yeah. as such. Now, again, you know, we've still got another day to go, two okay. days, you know, so we've got to you know, just be aware that anything could happen yeah. again. So, but at this moment in time, all our loans are pretty happy to be here, and the clubs at this moment in time are pretty happy for the, for them to be here as well. Interestingly, uh, something that sort of happened, which you have to almost remind yourself about, and um, obviously you were alternating Lucas and Sean mm -hmm. for quite a while, mm -hmm. and now Lucas has been in there for mm. five games, I think, five successive games, and you did mm. say originally that there the might come a time when you did make a decision mm. on who in your mind was mm. number one and number two and I know you have a lot of respect for Sean's yeah. ability to come in at any time yeah. and, and do the job but you, you've gone with Lucas for five games now does that signify anything that, um, that well it signifies he's got the spot at the moment yeah. and Sean's you know been very professional and he's worked hard in training and Listen, he's the most enthusiastic person in the world, Sean, and uh, and he needs his football. So, you know, he, he's he's there working very hard to win his place back, and it is always winnable because he is good enough for that. But um, you know, Lucas had a uh, a couple of good games, and it was circumstance that meant that you know he, he stayed in. Um, we had a couple of nil against, you know, that sort of... He's played well. Yeah, yeah. He, he's played well. Um, I mean, don't forget, when we were on the losing run, uh, it wasn't any any one of them that was worse than the other sort of thing, you know, it was just the way things were going at the time. So it's... Uh, no, we've got to make sure that Sean knows that he's, you know, knocking on the door all the time, and it could be any time, so he's got to be ready. Uh, but yeah, Lucas at the moment has been quite consistent over the last few games. Yeah.